Hi ladies and gents, this is Alex with Green Revolution again. Uh, we are at probably one of the most impressive startups as far as energy that I've ever seen. And I'm gonna hand it away to Scott Kessler of LO3 Energy. Scott, what is LO3 Energy? Where are we and what is this all about? So LO3 Energy is a young startup here out of Brooklyn, New York. And what we're really trying to do is use blockchain technology to create marketplaces for distributed energy. So the idea is that folks with solar panels, with storage, with demand enabled resources, all of these things can actually start to trade that value with one another. We're moving to a world where we have lots of different participants at Grid Edge. It's no longer just a few utilities and a few generators. Mm -hmm. We want to really put in place a market where these folks can all begin to trade with one another. Uh, we have a little demonstration project here in Brooklyn called the Brooklyn Microgrid, where we're looking to start to show that these are not technological impossibilities. The technology already exists. We need to start proving out the business models and developing the regulatory structures that allow this. So here in Brooklyn, we actually are already getting folks to buy and sell locally produced PV power with one another. So neighbors can go into an app and say, here's my willingness to pay, here's how much I'm willing to spend on solar power, and they can find other neighbors who are producing energy. So we really are creating a marketplace for mm. that here in the Gowanus and Park Slope communities. In, in other words, the net metering that's currently occurring with someone with a photovoltaic or solar panel uh, setup can then be purchased by another person nearby. So what we really want to do is start moving away from these things like net metering, where you ah, get okay. one fixed price no matter what. Right. The idea is that price should reflect how, what's the interest in the community? How much demand is there for green power? Where is that being produced? How much value does that provide back to the grid? Huh. So you actually start to get these little localized costs of PV power. And so you would actually send a signal to investors that in different markets, it's gonna have a different payback to install solar. Interesting. And so can you explain it to our viewers? Because I, I, you know, I, I work with a solar company or I have worked with solar companies in the past where I go door to door, sell solar panels and say, hey, right now, if you go with X, Y or Z company and go with X, Y or Z panel, you'll then overproduce, hopefully, and you'll get a check at the end of the year, well, a wholesale rate check from your electric provider, whether that's Con Edison, whether that's PSC and g or Orange and Rockland. So what, what is different about the way that you're doing this for the, for the consumer that really sort of knows nothing about electricity viewing? So what we really want to do is start to show that there is a price in the community that reflects that community's values and their economics. Hmm. So you have certain neighbors. Everyone's going to have a certain willingness to pay and be able to say, I want to spend so much on my solar power. I want to buy locally produced power because I care about my community mm -hmm. and it means this much to me. That's going to vary for every person and they should be able to say, here's my maximum. So right. we can take those maximum willingness to pay, those are sort of like bids into a market, Combine those with the fact that we have a constrained amount of local clean energy that goes up and down with the sun and as clouds come out, combine those two and create a real-time market price for solar power in this community. That's phenomenal. That's phenomenal. So, so literally, you might be willing to pay just as much as you're currently paying for dirty coal electricity if that's where the market is, if you're, if you're that wealthy or if you're just that dedicated. Or you might be a person on a little bit of a lower end but willing to you know, hop right in there and get that clean green energy when, it's, when it works for them and for their wallet. What we're aiming to do is really allow customer choice here. Customer so choice. if the community really values local clean energy, you're going to see a premium price for that. It's going to drive more demand and hopefully drive more investment. But on the other hand, if you're in a community where they really value coal, maybe you see a premium price for coal. Huh. We're not trying to dictate what the outcome is here. I think personally that distributed energy will win at right. the end of the day if you right. allow people to pick but we want to give the customers the choice they never had on the utility grid. That's awesome. So we're taking away a monopoly or an oligopoly, depending on where you live and what kind of options you have. And we're, giving a, we're talking free market. You get to choose where your electricity comes from, how much you're willing to pay for it, when you're willing to get it. And you were talking about something else, Scott. There's something along the lines of uh, with the transactive grid that you know when there's an overload or, or something, you know, when something occurs in the grid, you can turn, you can, you can, you know, what we currently do, you can decide to increase the power supply to the grid. Or in this case, you can, you can do what? You can t you know, take off some certain appliances or, or, or things off the grid, right? Yeah, so what we want to start enabling is not just the buying and selling of energy supply, like right. we were talking about before, but the idea of demand response or Dem megawatts. Demand response. Watts. Yep, so the idea that we can turn off devices. The grid just wants to stay balanced. Huh. And so it doesn't matter if you increase generation or you decrease the amount of load, the amount of demand. As long as you're balancing on those two, mm. the wires stay happy. So if I have a Nest thermostat, if I have a Philips Hue light bulbs, anything that's a smart device, I can tell them that 
when my local price of energy reaches a certain threshold, turn off those devices because oh, I don't awesome. want to pay the amount for it. That's great. Now, there's a benefit there for the customer huh. because they're saving money, yeah. but it goes a little deeper than that because all of a sudden, the utility grid has a much more cost-effective way to run their distribution network. They can look out and say, if I have an issue, if I'm reaching capacity in a certain network, I want to actually start to pay people to turn off devices. So the utility grid avoids an outage. The utility avoids turning on their expensive peaker plants that they only run on really hot summer days. And you also, in a way, create a revenue stream for that customer. That's phenomenal. And so, so can you talk to us about uh, literally what we're looking at right here? You brought us into the lab or all, or all like the, we're talking, this is the true startup uh, functionality here. Can you just please educate us and what, what, what are we looking at here? Yes, yeah, so this is sort of our lab setup here where we start to actually test all of our devices and right. start to simulate. What does it look like when you've got a building of the future with all these smart hmm. loads in there right? and you allow them to start transacting with one another? So we have at the centerpiece of each one of these four quadrants is one of our tag elements, our transactive grid elements. Okay. These are doing a few things. So one, they're doing standard metering where they are measuring energy production, energy consumption. They are communicating with one another via the blockchain to form a virtual machine. And sorry to interrupt, what is a blockchain for our viewers? So a blockchain is really a software that is behind things like Bitcoin. The idea that we can all start to transact with one another. We can trade with one another without a central entity. Uh, huh. That was first used in currency where we were sending money back and forth with right. cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and others. Now we're starting to use that same underlying software and apply it to energy. So we can all transact with one another. We can trade solar power. We can trade battery that's energy that's stored in my battery. And I can do that without any sort of central entity. Central entity meaning, meaning a dollar, meaning going to a bank or? Yep, so we don't need the approval of any sort of bank or a utility to approve our trade. As long as we are both fair actors in this market and as long as there is a transaction within both of our price preferences, we're good to go. We wow. don't need anyone else's permission. And that information gets stored with every other user on the network simultaneously. Hmm. So everyone's allowed to look back and see what's been happening in the market and also base their future pricing off of their previous transactions. Like what did Alex pay Scott for his solar power? I don't want to say overgenerated because it's not necessarily net metering, but what did Alex pay Scott for the uh, energy produced from his solar panels two weeks ago versus what he wants to pay the guy down the street with the wind turbine? Yep, and we definitely want to make sure that there is a lot of privacy around this data so that only Alex and Scott can see the data around our transactions. Right. But it should be an open and transparent market to the extent possible so that we know there's no Enron style collusion going on in the energy right, markets. Right. Love it, love it. Awesome, awesome. So literally here, this is the equivalent of, of I guess a really advanced version of, of, of someone's meter, this, this transactive grid, the tag yeah. you're talking about. I mean, it's really more of a computer than a meter. So, you know, it has all of the same functionality that a standard meter has, but some has some pretty sophisticated computational ability. Mm -hmm. And that's really what makes it different from, you know, other advanced meters that are going out in the field today. So we not only have the measuring, we have the devices actually communicating with one another and forming this market. Okay. We also then allow them to talk to these other smart devices. So using Zigbee, using Z-Wave and these standard communication protocols we're seeing, we can take the transactions that occur between them and actually translate those transactions, translate them into actions. So all of a sudden, if I have bought the ability to turn off these light bulbs, right. well, all of a sudden the light bulbs then will turn off automatically. I don't have to actually go and manually turn them off myself. Wow. We can actually automate all of that. So the grid has a reliable source of demand response, like we were talking about before, demand response. or reliability of when I tell you I am going to charge or discharge my battery at certain price points that I actually execute on those transactions. That's phenomenal. And, and I see here we have everything from light bulbs to these little night lights to cell phones to all the way down here we have we have uh, Siemens. Uh, this, is, uh, this is for EV vehicles, electric vehicles. This is a charging station, correct? Correct. Yeah, we don't expect all of this to be in homes today, but what we want to be is basically ahead of what is in the buildings we're working with. So that whenever right. anyone goes in their home and says, I want to pick you know, a Ecobee thermostat, I want to pick a Nest thermostat. Hmm. We don't have to tell them, no, you can't use that on our system. We want to be able to talk with any smart device that gets installed in a residence, in a building, or in an industrial complex. <laughs> so we, not just devices, but also talking with building management systems. So things that control large processes, large loads, 
Maybe there, we're not actually sending the command signal, we're just communicating with that system and saying, here's the prices, make your decisions because you are your own sophisticated system. I love it, I love it. And so here we have the Ecobee you were talking about. All right, that's a, uh, it's, it's another version. It's, it's, a, it's a competitor of the Nest, right? Yep. Uh, it's, it's an automated home. And can we take a walk over here to see the, uh, looks sure. like we have the Nest over here, Scott. Yep. Um, and so, you know, if you could really boil this down to, you know, so let's say a middle school science student or, or, you know, an elementary or even like, you know, someone that just happens to be really unaware of, you know, all the ins and outs and specifics here, why should or what, what is the benefit of this, like if you could boil it down for the average everyday consumer, what is L0, uh, LO3 Energy doing that is so critical and how can we understand it in a, in a sound bite? Not that I want to dilute it to a sound bite, but I just really sort of want to just get it out there. So yep. what are you doing and why should we care? We're creating a marketplace for distributed energy. So marketplace idea, for distributed energy. That everyone's going to own distributed energy. You're going to need to trade that with someone else. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't be that there is one central entity, one utility who decides what's the value of your devices. It should be a marketplace just like everything else. So it's a marketplace for distributed energy that we're really putting in place. And, and so that brings everybody from Con Edison to PSEG to someone who has a, a ground-mounted solar system, to someone who has you know, uh, photovoltaic you know, panels on their roof, to someone who has a wind turbine, or someone that loves their, 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 their fracking, uh, you know, the lantern gas from fracking, all into the marketplace at an even playing level. You know, no matter what your beliefs are, you're going to all be playing the same game with the same rules. That's, that's really what we want. I mean, everyone is just a grid actor, eventually. Some are much larger than others, but everyone should play by the same rules and have the same abilities to participate. That's phenomenal. I love that. I love that. So where do you see, I mean, you have, you said you have this one and you, the Brooklyn microgrid we have here, it's, a, it's the pilot program. You know, do you mind, are you able to share where else in the world you are, you know, you have pilots or, or where you see the 5, 10, 15 year scope and uh, progression of L03 Energy? Yeah, we're currently actually working on projects both in the US, in Europe, and in Australia. Because wow. we think all three markets are interesting, but they're all unique. Hmm. So we need to be able to customize our solution based on the regulatory and cultural environment we're working in. We think this sort of distributed energy market right. works in all of them, mm -hmm. but we need to be able to understand what do people want. So here we're in Brooklyn, where there's been a really big demand for local clean energy. That may not be the case in every other community we work in. Right. Simultaneously, here in Brooklyn, we're working from the grassroots up. We also want to be working with utilities and energy retailers to figure out what are their business models in a future like this. Hmm. We still need folks who are actually going to own and operate the wires, and we need to figure out what are the business models for them in the future. So we think when you start implementing these distributed energy marketplaces, these utilities take on a really different role. So we're starting to work with a few of them across the world to figure out what is that business model, what are their revenue streams, and then what are the products and services that their customers actually want. You know, we think working at the grassroots level is going to give us invaluable expertise in going to folks who have millions of customers and saying, we've actually worked with folks on how they want to implement a local energy marketplace, let us teach you. That's phenomenal. And, and so I always ask people about the triple bottom line, people, profit, and planet. You know, uh, how, how does that tie into this or does it not? Is this just literally, you know, this is neither good nor bad, wherever you're getting your energy, here's the open marketplace. Well, I think right now we've had a lot of these technologies that can help us reduce energy use, reduce our carbon footprint for a long time, mm -hmm. but we haven't really had a really good mechanism to incentivize them. You know, it's mostly been state funding, grant programs, things like that. A marketplace can do that much better and much more efficiently. So it'll be a much more effective way to accelerate the adoption of clean distributed energy resources. So mm -hmm. solar panels, batteries, all of the technology of the future that we think can lead us towards a carbon-free future. So I do think it is hitting that nice triple bottom line that you're talking about there. Phenomenal, phenomenal. And we're talking about any sort of energy can be put onto this grid. It can be geothermal, it can be mechanical, you can be riding your bike, hooked up to the grid, whatever that might be, yep. and you'll be able to trade and buy in a free marketplace. Yep, exactly. Awesome. That's what we're aiming for. I love it, I love it. There it is, L -L -O -L -O 3 Energy. And Scott, anything else you want to say to our viewers and maybe even people wanting to get into this field? Kids in college wondering what the heck they're going to do in this, this, this unknown marketplace and after they graduate from Columbia or community college or whatever, uh, you know, I just any thoughts out there for anybody uh, that, that, you know, why, why did you go, you know, get into this? And what about, you know, inspiring other people to get into this field? Well, I think we all benefit from electricity. We don't think about it. But if you take a moment and you look around, you realize what an important role plays in your life. Anyone who's been around a blackout, whether it was New York City during Hurricane Sandy or any other number of places where you lose power, you understand how fundamental it is to our lives. So we want to keep using electricity moving forward, but we want to do it in a responsible fashion. So I'm trying here, trying to help protect the earth in my own little way. 
I think everyone can try to do it, and getting into a field like this is a really fun way and a really opportunistic way to do it. Phenomenal. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, Scott. Again, this is uh, Scott Kessler with L03 Energy. One more look at the logo. Look for it. Start your own microgrids. Reach out to these great people here and ask them how you can collaborate with them. And uh, as always, subscribe to stay alive. Green Revolution. See you next time.